um, today we're talking about mem uh, memory. We have some activities. And Holland Neal from Livestream is our presenter, as well as when she completes, we have another special guest, uh, Nathan Hawk, who is my intern, and a hot off the press new graduate of Richmond High School. <laughs> So, um, now, Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Well, hello, everybody. Can everybody, everyone hear me okay? Okay, I'm going to try to speak loudly and slowly. Sometimes when I'm talking in front of people, I can speak quickly. So you just tell me if I'm going too fast, okay? All right, so um, my name is Holland, like she mentioned, and I am the Caregiver Programs Coordinator at Lifestream Services. Um, we are the area ag agency on aging that serves East Central Indiana, so that includes Richmond. And our mission is to provide the right information, resources, and support for improving quality of life and maintaining independence for older adults and those with disabilities. So um, Angie's back there. She's our outreach coordinator. We have a table back there, so if you haven't gone back there, feel free to do that afterwards. Um, and I am the caregiver programs coordinator, so any program to support family caregivers is kind of within my scope. Um, so that has to do with lots of dementia-related programming or really anything to support those who are caring for a loved one who has um, a disease or a disability or an illness. Um, so if you're interested to learn in any of the caregiver programs that we do have, here's the caregiver guide. Angie has some of those back there. Um, and if you have any programs about that, you can see me afterwards as well. Um, but Sherry mentioned that you guys are all interested in learning about memory, is that right? Interested in learning about um, just some strategies and helping you remember things. Um, sound good? That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so we're going to kind of link that to brain health. So we have a couple of different handouts on your table there. So first we're going to look over this one that has the Livestream logo at the top. So if everybody could grab one of those. Um, you might, if you don't have one at your table, let me know. We might have some extras at some tables or you can share with a partner. Um, and there's some pens there as well if you'd like to take notes. Um, but really, we're just going to go over um, this sheet of paper, some different strategies that might work to remember things, um, whether you've tried these before or maybe they're new to you. Um, and then afterwards, I, I want to hear from you guys, too. Like, we, we want to learn from each other, right? We want to um, see what works for other people as well who are, might be in similar situations. So um, we'll go through these, and then you guys will have a chance to share what kind of things work for you. So does that sound good? Awesome. Okay, so first on that list is um, creating a calendar. So um, write down all of your appointments or events on a calendar and put it in a place where you will frequently see it. So you could put it on the fridge, you might put it on your desk um, or your nightstand. And just make sure to write down the, the date and the time of your appointment or event that you, um, you want to make sure to remember. Um, so you know sometimes you might write on your calendar what you have, but forget to write the time. So making sure to be as detailed as possible uh, might be helpful. So um, people might keep a variety of different types of calendars. I know some who keep it on their cell phone if that's something you like to do um, or a big desk calendar or one that you might hang on the fridge. Um, does anybody in here keep a calendar pretty consistently? Is that helpful? I know I'd be lost without my calendar so um, yeah it sounds like if you, if you don't keep a calendar it might be worth a try to, to adopt that or maybe even if you do keep a calendar to, to just be more intentional in my, maybe what you're writing down on that. Um, next is keeping a journal. So um, to more easily recall events in the past, you might consider keeping a journal. This will allow you to keep track of important events of each day. You can create a habit of this by writing or by keeping your journal next to your bed and recording the events of each day. Um, does anybody in here keep a journal? A couple of us? Yeah? So Angie has a couple back there, um, first come, first serve. I don't know how many she brought, but um, you, if, if that's something that you haven't tried or maybe you're just like, yeah, writing's not really for me, um, but you, it might be helpful to maybe adopt it um, or at least give it a try for a week or a month or so. Um, if you want to remember things that maybe happened um, last week, but you know, struggle to remember the details of that at the end of each day, write down those details, and then you can, when you're talking to a family member, um, go back to your journal, kind of look at that. And even if you make a habit of that um, for a couple of years, you could even look back and see what happened on September 2nd, um, 2021, um, and can even help with reminiscing there. So um, if you don't keep a journal and haven't tried that and are wanting um, maybe some help with remembering things that happened in the past, that might be a good option for you as well. 
Um, creating a list can be helpful as well. So um, with multiple tasks to do each day, it can be really helpful. Um, this can be a to-do list um, of things to do around the house or errands to run when you're out. Um, I know sometimes I'll leave my house with a plan in my head and then I will get home and realize I forgot to make a stop because I didn't write it down. Can anybody else relate to that? <laughs> Yep, yep, so even making a list when you're, when you're going out somewhere um, or, or even when you're in your own home, you know lots of things to do. You wake up and, and you think of all the things you have to do but don't write them down and maybe the end of the day comes and you're like, well, I, I didn't get everything done that I thought I would. Um, so making a list can be really helpful for that. Um, I, another important thing that's noted here is to make sure to have a consistent place for that list. Um, so I have, um, what I found to be helpful for myself, and I don't know if anyone can relate, is having a magnetic notebook on my refrigerator. Because I don't know about you, but I've made a list before and then I lose my list. And it's like, well, <laughs> I had everything I needed to do, but what, what, what do I do now? Um, so uh, the fridge might get, be a good place for that, especially for a grocery list. You know, you can open your fridge, um, realize you don't have any milk, and just close the fridge, write it right on there. Um, does anybody else have a place where they keep their list? Maybe a nightstand or anything? Nightstand, fridge, fridge, okay, fridge is a good place. So if you struggle with losing your list, you might try a fridge. It sounds like that's working for a lot of people in here. Um, next on this list are sticky notes. So anybody have sticky notes that they place places? Yeah? Okay, yeah, so these can be really helpful. You can really put them anywhere. Um, I like to put them in a place where I know I'll see it, even if it doesn't make sense. So if on here is um, talking about, if you have to defrost something, you know, take it out of your freezer, put it in your fridge, this is something that I will forget to do if I don't make myself an, a note in a place where I'll see it. So this can, for me, it's either in my mirror or my alarm clock, um, because if I put it on the freezer, well, I might not go over to the freezer and even see it there. So just put it in a place where you know you will go to remember to even go and do something else somewhere else. So um, anyone, anyone else use sticky notes? Any other places you consistently put those? Yeah? On the door? Okay, that's a, that's a good place because you know you're, if you're going to forget something walking out the door, at least you can see it right there. There you go. Your microwave? Okay. Yeah? Awesome. Yeah, so sticky notes can be helpful if you, um, if you, don't ha if you haven't tried that. That might be a, be a good thing to, to try. Um, just want to check in. Everyone hear me okay? Speaking at the volume okay? Okay, great. Um, and the last thing that is on this little section is smart devices. So does anybody have an Amazon Alexa or a Apple HomePod or anything like that? Yeah, if you haven't heard of those there, you might have seen the commercials where it says, hey Alexa, and you can kind of talk to this device. You have one? Okay, yeah, so um, if this is something that, if you're interested in maybe learning a new piece of technology, this can be helpful. You can really just talk to her. It, for those types of devices, you can really just talk to it and ask it to set you a reminder to go off at a certain time. So yeah, this could be, um, you can say, for me, I have an Alexa, so I say, hey Alexa, set a reminder at 8 a.m. to take this pill or whatever that may be, whatever event that you want to remember to do every single day um, or once a week, you can ask her to um, Alexa or whatever other device. There are lots of different options there, um, but they, it'll actually talk to you and um, remind you to, to do something throughout um, the week. So that might be something to adopt if you haven't thought about that. Um, so we're going to go through these last few strategies and then we're going to learn from each other. So keep, keep in mind if you are, if I haven't said something, that is something that you use to help remember things and we'll um, make sure to hear from you. Um, so the first one on that, um, that list of memory strategies here is to rhyme words. So if names are difficult for you, you might try this, um, this technique. So um, you might try to uh, make this a descriptive word or a word that um, just rhymes with their name that you will remember. So the examples here are, t are tall Paul. So if Paul walks in the room and um, you, you can never remember his name, but he's a tall man, you might um, think to say, okay, in my head I'm going to think tall Paul. I might not call him tall Paul, but in my head I'm going to say, okay, tall Paul, and then I'm going to remember that next time I see him and I'll be more likely to remember his name. Um, so something to note for this is, and for any of these is it, it might not make sense for other people you know some of the words that you use to rhyme um, or to help remember you remember somebody's name but as long as it works for you that's what matters so um, the other one here is cherry carry so I don't know if somebody if there's if cherry is something that reminds her of the person or if it just rhymes with their name but if that's what helps you remember then that's what that's what you can go with 
Uh, next is creating a funny sentence or a phrase. So um, this can be helpful if you're trying to remember um, a specific set of letters or numbers. Um, so the example here is John wants to remember his license plate number, 76BWNC. He decides to remember it by repeating the 76ers better win the national championship. So each, so each time he um, thinks of his license plate number, maybe it's something he has to recall often for, um, for whatever reason, he can, um, he can think of that phrase in his head and take the first letter from each of those words, and then he'll be more likely to remember his license plate number. So that might be helpful, um, helpful for you guys as you're, if there is something that you need to often remember. And then lastly here is creating an acronym. So um, the example here um, is, uh, what's her name? Angie. Angie's back there. So Angie um, has the goal of memorizing the Great Lakes. She uses the acronym HOMES to do this. Um, so the Great Lakes are Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Um, so when she thinks of the Great Lakes, she can say, okay, HOMES, and then go through each of those letters, and then it helps jog her memory of what the Great Lakes are. Um, and then next is um, Sharon, who did not make a grocery list and does not want to forget the four items she needs at the store. So she repeats pace in her head. So before she goes in, she says, okay, I need pasta, apples, carrots, and eggs. So she, rem she says, okay, that, those letters spell pace, so I'm going to walk around the store and keep saying that so then I don't remember or I don't forget to, to get one of those items. Um, so that can be helpful if you maybe forgot to make a list or don't have time and need to remember something quickly. Um, to, to be able to recall those. Um, so now I want to hear from you guys. You've heard enough of me talking, right? So let's, let's hear from you guys. So what are some of the things that um, maybe we didn't mention today that are really helpful for you in remembering? Or maybe we did mention them and, um, and you just want to emphasize that. So yeah. Uh, my license plate number is 162APG. Okay. So what I did was make it 162 annual percentage. Okay. That's great. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's perfect. That's exactly what we were just talking about. So, very good. Yeah, anything else? <laughs> Alarm clock? Yeah, putting a sticky note on there? Or? I know what time I'm supposed to get up. <laughs> that is helpful. I, yes, I would be lost without my alarm clock. <laughs> yep. Anybody else? Even any of the things that we talked about here, if you, um, if those are really helpful for you. Mm -hmm. If it's for this month, I'll put it on my refrigerator. And each month that I have something to do, I put it on my refrigerator. There you go. But I always write myself notes. I write out the grocery order when I go to the store. So I'm mm -hmm. running around the country when you see it cut off from the store. Yeah. It's helped me a lot. Yeah. What about the sales folks? It's helped me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm so the youngest of, of my sister's sister. There you go. Yeah. So she was she was talking about writing notes if you didn't hear her. So um, I think that's helpful because then you can see it and then even just okay, it's there. I'm gonna look at it every day on the refrigerator and see it. And even writing it down sometimes can just help us remember things anyway. So that can be helpful with in terms of journal writing as well. Dry erase board. And, and as, I, as I complete that task, I just erase it. There you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you where do you keep your dry erase board at? Near the couch. Okay. Gotcha. So if dry erase board that might be helpful for anybody who's looking for a new um, new way. Thank you for sharing that. So yeah. Any anything else anyone wanted to know on that section? No. Electronic calendar. Electronic calendar on your phone. Very good. And yeah, I know some. I don't have one of these, but I know some can even sync to other people's calendars if you're trying to stay. That's pretty techy for me. But if you're into that, that might be helpful as well. Um, okay, great. Um, so yeah, yeah. My oldest nephew uh, was born in 1944. He's December the 12th is his birthday. So his mom is my oldest sister. She's 94. So I called her today and said. He's, he's not with us anymore. I said, can you know the day is mm -hmm. Lester's birthday? I said, he was born in 1944. She said, how do you got all that? Why you got all that? <laughs> 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 but it, 
it's it's fun to I, I always feel you know cared for and loved when I when I know that people remember certain dates that are important in my life so I'm sure that that's a way that people can feel and your life can feel loved as well so that's awesome very good okay well yeah we were just talking about this too that on Facebook it tells you birthdays so that's like birthday. <coughs> I right. Again, yes. To look to see whose birthday. Is. Yes. Very good. Yeah, that's helpful as well. I use that quite a bit. I will get a notification. I'm like, oh, I would have forgotten if I if I didn't see that. So, very good. Okay. Awesome. Well, let's move on to the brain health section of this. Um, so this is um, the sheet that you'll grab for that. Um, it sh there should be some on your tables. Um, and at the top is a little note that says, as you age, a healthy body is key to a healthy brain and a sharp mind. Stay healthy and active, and keep, stay healthy and active to help reduce your risk of stroke, heart disease, memory loss, and difficulty with thinking and learning. Um, so I think something really notable here is that it's kind of talking about heart disease and brain health in the same section. So um, what you can think about now is whatever you know about um, how to keep a healthy heart, a lot of those things can apply to keeping a healthy brain as well. Um, so we're going to go over a couple of those lifestyle factors that help us to, to keep a healthy brain because um, these memory strategies are great, um, but we also want to do what we can to help just keep a sharp mind as we age as well. Um, because, you know, there is going to be some normal changes that go along in our brains as we age that might make it more difficult to remember things, but um, we, we should definitely do our best to, um, yeah, just to make sure that we are, are keeping care, taking care of ourselves in the ways that we know how to. So um, we'll go on that middle section here that says your lifestyle choices affect your brain health. And first there is getting enough sleep. So um, adults need seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Um, did everybody know that that was the recommended um, range of sleep? Yeah? Awesome. Yeah, so um, whatever you need to do to help yourself do that, um, so whether that's limiting distractions or maybe not drinking caffeine any time close to b before bed or, um, or even turning your TV off when it gets too close to bedtime so that light doesn't distract you, whatever's helpful for you there just to make sure to get enough rest can be helpful for um, just keeping your mind sharp. I don't know about you, but if I don't get enough sleep and then I try to go um, and do whatever I need to do the, the next day, I feel groggy and my, uh, I'm not able to focus. So um, just helping us to get enough sleep can help us to, to remain um, alert and help our brains to stay sharp. Um, next is getting regular checkups. So um, just seeing your doctor regularly, making sure that you are addressing what needs to be addressed, um, as well as having just a baseline for how you're doing cognitively. So um, just if, if you are getting those regular checkups and you have somebody that knows you and would know what is normal and what might not be normal. So just continuing to, to go and see your physician um, regularly. Um, next is aim or, or move more, sit less. So aim for 150 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise per week or 75 minutes of vig vigorous exercise. If this is something that is brand new to you and you, you haven't been exercising, don't feel, let these numbers overwhelm you. Um, a little bit is better than none at all. So starting small is really good if you can go on a five to 10 minute walk um, um, for a few times a week and then work your way up from there. Um, can be, um, but, but yeah, so exercising is really um, healthy for um, your heart, I'm sure, as you've heard, and it's also healthy for your brain. So um, we want to make sure to keep that in mind as well. Uh, next is eating healthy, so increasing the amounts of fruits and vegetables that you eat and reducing your intake of sodium, added sugar, and saturated and trans fats. Um, so just keeping in mind on the things that we're eating and understanding that, um, you know, we can enjoy um, some treats every once in a while, especially during the holiday season. You know, we want to have those um, yummy um, baked goods, but just making sure to also get the appropriate amounts of fruits and vegetables um, to, to maintain a healthy body and a healthy heart and a healthy mind. And then last on here is just to, um, if you currently smoke or vape, um, just working to, to reduce that and quit that um, because that um, can definitely have an impact on our brain health as well. So um, that is just a little bit, you know, I, I'm not a brain health expert, but um, there are definitely things that we can all do to help us maintain a healthy brain and a healthy body in general. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to note here is that um, we, we want to make sure to um, cognitively stimulate our, our brains and actively do that. So there are lots of things that we can do to help activate our brains. We can learn a new skill. We can um, paint or draw or do word searches. Um, does anybody have things that they like to do to activate their brain? Reading? Reading? Reading. Reading. Yeah. Reading and word 
Reading and word search. Any others? Crossword puzzles. Okay. That, yeah, so that, all of those are great. Keep doing those. Keep activating your brain um, just on a daily basis. And we're going to do a little bit of that today, actually. Um, so back there, Angie has some live stream mugs that she's going to hold up one of those for you guys. And I have some trivia questions. Um, so um, when, whenever you get a question right, um, then Angie will bring around a mug for you. Um, and I... I believe we have enough mugs. So if you answer a question in general, I'll give you a couple of chances, and I think everyone might be able to walk away with a mug. So um, are you guys ready for this? Ready for some trivia? We're going to work our brains a little bit. <laughs> OK. Yep, you can just raise your hand, and I'll call on you. And then Angie and um, Nathan will come around with, with a mug for you. All right, so the first question is, as of 2021, how many American citizens were officially retired? And I have, I, have three, I have three choices for each of the questions, so you don't have to just pull a number out, okay? Um, so A is 69 million, B is 48 million, and C is 80 million. And the question was, as of 2021, how many Americans were officially retired? Um, <laughs> C? All right, we've got, we've got someone here that wants to answer. So C is not correct. So C was 80 million. Um, the next two options are 69 million and 48 million. Uh, you have a hand up? 69? Yes, yeah, 69 million. So we'll go here. Very good. You'll, you'll get another chance. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, number two. In 1972, which Olympic athlete set a record by winning seven gold medals? Ooh, you didn't even need the options. You got that. You got it? Okay, right over here. You're very good. <laughs> it was Mark Spitz. Yeah, swimmer. She, she, she got it before we could even, even process the answer. <laughs> Okay, um, and then the next one is what was the uh, what was the brand behind the first commercial for TV dinners? So first commercial for t TV dinners. Banquet. Banquet. That's not not correct. Swanson. That's correct. No one even needs options. That's great. It was Sw Swanson. Yep. So she's got Swanson. Okay, the next one is hopefully easy. Um, it's, it has to do with what we talked about today. So just. Anybody to volunteer and share one thing that they learned from our discussion today? Yes. Writing notes. Writing notes. Very good. That can be very helpful in remembering things. Awesome. It's the easiest mug you ever got, right? <laughs> okay. Um, number five, this one is holiday themed. So what do we call the snowman in the song Winter Wonderland? Yep. Not Frosty, so it not, it's Winter Wonderland. So the options are Kris Kringle, Frosty was the second option, and then Parson Brown was the third one. Parson Brown. Who gets that one? Parson Brown. There's the hand. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, next one is a question from the 60s, 1960s. Um, what, was the, what kind of skirt was fashionable in the 1960s? You, did you hear me? Did you say miniskirt? Yep, she was right. <laughs> Very good. I don't even know if you guys are using your brain. I feel like they're just all it's just so easy for you guys. A miniskirt. Yep. On the official U.S. Lift list of popular baby names, what was number one for girls born in 1950? Mary. Not Mary. Sarah. Not Sarah. Sandy. Ruth. So we've got either Nancy, Carol, or Linda. 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 I heard I got Linda right here. Carol. <laughs> it was Linda. Yep. <laughs> well, to be fair, I, I pulled them all off of a list that were like in the top 20, so they were all popular, but I was just looking for the most popular. <laughs> okay. And can everybody hear me okay now? Is this a little bit better? No? I'll try to talk louder. Um, all right. So this one is also about our discussion today. So what is one tool that you can use to help remember events in the past? A journal? She's got it over there with the journal. Very good. 
All righty. Um, in number nine, how much did the average slice of diner pie cost in 1965? The average cost of a piece of diner pie. So we've got either 20 cents, 60 cents, or 35 cents. 35 cents, right here. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you got your mug. <laughs> okay, um, we've got another question from what we talked about today. Name one of the ways that we talked, or name one of the ways that we talked about today that you can maintain a healthy brain. So that last piece we talked about. Exercise. 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 Did you get a mug yet? Okay, so we got exercise, sleep. All right, we'll go here. And then, um, does somebody else say sleep? We can do two for that one. Very good. Good job. Okay. In 1950, what percentage of Mer Americans owned a TV? In 1950. Twenty-five. Less than twenty-five. All right. Our options are three percent, nine percent, or twelve percent. We got 9% right here. <laughs> All right, and then this next question builds on that one. In 1960, so that was in 1950, 9%. In 1960, what percentage owned a TV? So that's 10 years later. 15%? Our options are 25%, 40%, or over 80%. Over 80. Over 80, right here. Very good. <laughs> All right. All right, the next one is another holiday one. So which fairy tale is the gingerbread house Christmas tradition inspired by? So making gingerbread houses during the holiday season, what, what fairy tale was that inspired by? Yeah, right here. Very good. Yep, Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> oh, she got a cup? She does have a mug. Oh. <laughs> um, you, can, you can go grab a coloring book afterwards if you like. <laughs> Sorry, not, you're just, you're just too good. <laughs> so next, if you, all right, so this one is for, is also related to what we talked about today. So if you frequently leave the house without your phone or wallet, what might you do to help remember these? Have a note. Have a note, yeah. Have a note. Have a note. Have a note. Have a note. Yeah. Have a note. 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 Have a Oh, it's really whatever, um, she said make a note, so whatever works for you, what, if you are struggling to remember something when you leave the house, just whatever works, works for you, but she gave us the idea of keeping a note, which I think is a great idea. Okay, next is what was the president, or who was the president from 1963 to 1969? Eisenhower. John? No. Not Eisenhower. Truman. Our op Truman. Kennedy. Kennedy. Not Kennedy, so... From nineteen, not Ford. So from 1963 to 69, our options are Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, or John F. Kennedy. It's, it is Johnson. Anybody else say Johnson? Okay, you got a mug, but <laughs> you're just you're just too good. <laughs> okay, um, which blood type is known as the universal donor? Anybody without a, who hasn't gotten a mug yet? Oh, positive. Yeah. Oh, positive or negative? Positive. Oh, 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 it's O negative. So, so close, but you can. We'll get one for her up there for for answering it. <laughs> okay. Um, any Beatles fans in here? Any Beatles fans? All right. You said, are you a Beatles fan? Yeah, well, this question's for you. <laughs> um, what year did the Beatles officially disband? So we have 1971, 1980, or 1966? 71. 71. 71, very good. <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay, number 18 for whoever doesn't have a mug yet. Um, 
Can you name one way that you can stimulate your brain each day? Exercise. Exercise. Very good. I didn't hear it. All righty. Okay, so the next one is which famous singer from the 40s and 50s had the nickname Old Blue Eyes? Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Any, you say Frank Sinatra back there. <laughs> when did Coca Cola start featuring Santa Claus in their holiday ads? So their holiday advertisements. Did they start um, featuring Santa Claus in 1931? 1945 or 1977? No, it was it was in the 30s. The 30s? It was in the 30s. Yep, it was it was 19, 1931. You were right. Yep. Yep. And did anybody else get that? No. <laughs> okay. We got five more here. So the next one is what year did Disneyland open? 1966, 1955, or 1981? That's all right. It was 1955. Anybody, anybody guess 1955? I'll believe you if you tell me. She guessed it back there. <laughs> okay. Um, so name one of the memory aids that we talked about today. That's the next one. Anybody who hasn't gotten a mug, can you name something we talked about today? One of the memory strategies? Sticky note. Sticky note. Rhyming. Sticky note and rhyming. Yep. Both of those are right. You can give one here. Anybody else? Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, good thing. We've got friends to remind us. <laughs> okay. Um, Tony Bennett had, had a 1951 number one hit song called Cold, Cold Heart. 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 Who said, I heard heart over here. One of you had, anybody who hasn't gotten a mug say heart? I think, I think you said heart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. We got just a few more. Um, so who wrote the Star Spangled Banner? We've got Edwin M. Stanton, Francis Scott Key. Francis Scott Key. Anybody say that? You say it? We got one right here. <laughs> She's getting you one. <laughs> she got that one. <laughs> OK. OK, well, we've got. <laughs> We can just, an we're still trying to simulate our brains though, right? So well, we can still answer them, right? <laughs> okay, so who was the president from 1953 to 1961? <laughs> I, heard, I heard it over there. What'd you say? Oh, yep, Eisenhower is correct. Okay, so this, this last one everybody should get. Um, so share with the group a tool that you personally use to remember important events or appointments. Calendar, calendar, very good. Writing things on a calendar. Cell phone, yep, very good. Awesome. Well, that's what I've got planned for us today. So I hope you guys learned a little bit more about memory aids and how to keep a healthy brain. And I hope you guys had some fun too. So if you do have any more questions about brain health or memory aids or um, anything related to life stream services, you can see Angie or I are in the back afterwards. So thank you all. And next, I um, have the pleasure to introduce my trusty assistant. Um, he is actually my intern and my now grand grandson. So we adopted, we've adopted him. So Nathan Hogg is now a graduate from Richmond High School. But he's not going to walk until June, right? Okay. And I'll let you I'll let him explain a lot of the things that he's doing in um, Wayne County. So, Nathan. Amen. Thank you. Hello, everybody. 
My name is Nathan Hogg. I'm an intern with Reed Health Community Engagement. I do a lot of different things for the hospital and, and out in the community. Some of the different things I do is I have a project called Hog Helps. And so my mission is to empower youth for future careers and stability in the workforce and provide them with mentorship, support if they need it, education, more or less meet them where they're at and take them to where they need to be or where I can get them to or, you know, they can get to. Um, I'm a board member of Future Achievers, and so Carl Reinhardt, I walk alongside with him at the high school, and we do a lot of life coaching, mentorship, and a lot of that different stuff, too. I serve on the Wayne County Cares uh, Board, and so Wayne County Cares is reducing the trauma that has affected Wayne County residents, and so we talk about ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, and um, you know how substance misuse can affect our community as well. Um, I, I'm on the NAACP, a member of the NAACP. Um, I'm on the Drug Free Wayne County uh, Partnership, so we I'm, serve on that. And then one of my favorite ones that I serve on is the Black Legacy Project. So that's enlightening the history of what, what African Americans have done in the Wayne County community. So I work alongside Ms. Marlene Lindsay, and it's a pleasure to walk alongside with her. My main, my main thing is I want to get a younger audience into the hospital and you know see how we can have younger people involved with read our mission and and so that way we can get them career ready as well it's been a real honor and a pleasure to work alongside and today is a very happy day for me i officially graduated high school so today is a very today's a very good happy day for me so i'm excited to stay, uh, go to college here in wayne county and stay local and uh, push to, to do more great things inside of our community. And that's all I got. Do you work with a certain age group? Yeah, I mostly work with like from 14 to like 21, somewhere in, in that area, like college, high school students, people my age. How old are you? I'm 18, yeah, I'm 18. So some one of my biggest mentors is Sherry Harlan, you know, that's that's my girl. We ha we have a lot of fun and do a lot of different things. Uh Carl Reinhardt, Marlene, and you know, my father has been a big mentor and a big help for me. And, you know, my uncle Pierre, he owns his own barber shop, so he's teaching me how to be an entrepreneur um and stuff like that. So he's been a really good push. Talk about the employment week you did. So for the high school, we had, um, I called it Let's Get to Work Week. So I partnered with the EDC and the Chamber of Commerce, and we did, and we invited a bunch of businesses to come each day of the week. And so the employers got to set up a table within the high school, and kids got to come up to the table and ask questions, you know, how to get employment. You know, they even obtained mentors and stuff like that. A lot of them they knew, and they had prizes to give away, and so that was a really good to do walk alongside the high school with that. Database. Your database. Oh, we took a survey for how many people, so we took a survey with all the high school students about how many people needed mentors, how many people didn't know about how to get a job, how to fill out an application, and it was like over 60% of high school students did not know how to get in touch with employer, they didn't know how to fill out an application, they did not have mentors. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. You have quite a broad area of interest. What do you plan on pursuing in college? So I'm going to go uh, and do social work. I want to minor in nonprofit management because I work with a lot of nonprofits. And so I want, want to learn how, like, how the structure of the nonprofits are. And then I want to go for um, social work and then business management, too. And just. So that way I can stay in the community and stay local too and work alongside businesses. You also need the capitalistic side of that too. Mm -hmm. You know, along with social work, you still need the, the capitalistic, if you're going to be a nonprofit, is that what I mean? Yeah, in order to do that well, would you not also want to know more about capitalistic, um, 
movements because that's what America has been. Yeah. So that's the business management side of it. Yeah. 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 Very good. Does anybody else have any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So if you were asked to be a participant in a cloning program, would you be interested? In a cloning program? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. What do you do in your spare time? <laughs> well, I just got my own apartment, so I'm, I'm staying home, so. That, that. You have a roommate or are you on your own? Yeah, I'm on my own. Yeah. We haven't had spare time. He thinks of things. I say he thinks of things every five seconds. Yes. I'm always on the go. I'm always on the go. Well, he has to be intelligent for you But then also to have to be so involved in so much. I mean, that, adults don't even have that much. I find it. He finds it. Yeah. A lot of the stuff I do, I do a lot of Zoom calls. Um, you know, so, but I do also like in-person stuff, but I just break it up and I still manage free time too. So that's good. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. I want to add, and Nathan's been real helpful for me. Um, it's just kind of scary because if I wake up, I log in on my computer about six. It's like 615, Miss Sherry, guess what? <laughs> like, hey, let me wake up. <laughs> you know, he comes up with a lot of great ideas. So actually, when I first referred him to Reed, then uh, HR called me back and said, can you send 100 more like him? <laughs> so um, it's been a pleasure working yeah, with him and real excited yes. for all the possibilities. Uh, I'm Sherry Harlan Davis, program host for Read Beside You. And I'm Lauren Williams, producer for Read Beside You. And we wish you a happy and healthy holiday. We're going to move to the introduction of the ambassador. Uh, some very quick clues to see if you can figure out who this person is before I call them up. Uh, this person lives in New Madison, Ohio, enjoys playing games, taking hikes, going on bike rides, and baking together. Please help me welcome Megan Moore. Come on up, Megan. How are you, Megan? Congratulations to you. Now, when we spoke, I asked you if you could bring a support team. Do you have a support team here with you today? Come on up, support team. Come on up. We'll line them up on both sides. Two, two levels if we need to. Come on up, support team. And when they get up here, you have a chance to introduce them. Okay, Megan's going to introduce all of you, uh, <laughs> and we'll get out of here at some time tonight. So, Megan, the floor is yours. All right. So, over here to the right, we have my family, um, my niece, Lily, my father-in-law, Bill, my two daughters who are really sad about leaving school early to come today, <laughs> uh, my mother-in-law, Jill, my wonderful husband, Brandon, 
my parents, Barb and Lee, and then I can't see. Oh, we have Abby, my niece, and then my two sister-in-laws, Brittany and Brennan, and my baby nephew, Cole. And then to the left is my other family, my family at work. We call ourselves the rehab family, I guess. And is that introduction enough, or do you want to? <laughs> well, that's very nice. Let's give them all a hand for being here to support Megan. All right. Thank you. Now, um, I would like to read a couple of things here, uh, actually three nominations among the many nominations that I thought were standout ones that would give us an idea of why people selected you as our ambassador. And then we'll have some other folks come up and say some other good things about you. So this one person said, Megan brings a burst of energy to the room. Megan has a radiant smile, cue the smile, that, <laughs> signs, that shines through her mask. She has the ability through her smile to talk to you about anything. With her good sense of humor and her jokes, you know it's gonna be a good day when she is working. She always exceeds expectations for the patients and her team. Megan is good at communication. She has the perfect job being a speech and language pathologist. She has the ability to re relate to patients and families on a personal level. It's very nice. And this other one follows. This one said, Megan Moore is a breath of fresh air. Megan is always willing to think outside the box. She is creative and very encouraging to patients, families, and staff. She has a phenomenal work effort and goes above and beyond, but if you would ask her, she would just say she's doing her job. She always makes a connection with patients. Megan has a way of explaining things to patients in a way that they can understand and has a keen sense of knowing what all around her is needed. Megan is a wonderful listener with the biggest heart and sense of humor. Megan finds fun activities for her patients to create grocery tasks, meaning uh, language skills, and swallowing strategies. Megan treats all around her family, all around like her family. Megan embraces Reed's mission, vision, and values, and exudes positivity. I don't know of anybody more deserving for this award. And the last one uh, sums up a lot of what we know about you, Megan. This person said, I think this is absolutely amazing. Megan is absolutely deserving of this. She is always positive. She is consistently kind and caring with all of her patients and goes above and beyond to make sure they have the care and resources they need. She is kind and compassionate with patients' families, and she takes time to educate and answer questions from families. Megan is always willing to lend a hand to her coworkers and take on extra hours or workload when patients' care requires it. She's forward thinking and has, a spe and has spearheaded projects to add services for inpatient and ARU care. I appreciate her, da her daily for her attitude and genuine spark. She loves people, she loves her job, and it shows. Let's give her a hand for those wonderful nominations. Okay, uh, Billy, there's some things you and others might like to share. So I just am so proud to be able to honor you with this nomination and award today, Megan. I can't think of someone who deserves this more than Megan does. Um, she exemplifies the ambassador award and does an amazing job with all of her patients. I've gotten to work with Megan firsthand on the acute rehab unit and see the work that she does with our neuro patients. And she's absolutely phenomenal. And to her family, I would like to say thank you for lending her to us um, and her daughters. Thanks for letting mom come to work. Um, we, we very much need her and our patients very much need her. So I am proud to give you your ambassador pin. Congratulations. You. I don't know how I'm going to top all of those wonderful <laughs> sentiments that have already been shared, but um, I've had the pleasure of working with Megan now for about 10 months since I've started, and it didn't take long to realize what a special therapist you are. You really are phenomenal, and we're so proud to have you on our team, so it's my pleasure to present you with your award. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you all.
Uh, we have some other prizes too, Megan, over there in that black bag. So when we leave, uh, make sure you take that bag with you. And also this lovely jacket uh, chosen and tailored specifically for you. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes on in your unit. We heard uh, several of these things from the nominations and from your coworkers here. We appreciate all the work that you do to care for our patients under all circumstances. So thank you very much for being our ambassador. Let's give her another hand. I also have one last thing to give you. These are beverage passes that you get to share. Those are special ambassador beverage passes you get to hand out, as you see, throughout the month to different people. So enjoy those. I also said at a certain point I was going to give you the microphone so you could share anything you like. Well, I've um, witnessed this award given many times from the audience perspective and always really impressed with the stories I hear about the recipients and just um, so inspired by them. So just to think that someone saw those qualities in me is very touching and I appreciate it. Thank you, Megan. Let's give her another hand. Appreciate it. And I do believe there's more people standing up here than there are out here, so that's uh, very visually apparent. So <laughs> I'd like to turn our attention now to the screen, so we do an unveiling. Here we have Megan, that is now on the World Wide Web. Congratulations to you. And, and thank you to the support team for being here to support Megan. We appreciate you coming out, and thank you for the great team that works with her. You take great, great care of patients, and, uh, couldn't do it without you. So thank you very much for all that you do here for Reed. Cofield with administration and I have a very special gem to um, share this month and I'm going to invite Chris up with me and Chris is an MA in our urgent care location and I just want to share um, a pretty touching story of what Chris did um, and this was submitted by one of our providers in the urgent care location and um, she shared that a patient came to the urgent care seeking treatment for multiple vague complaints Chris was the MA who roomed the patient and took time to really understand the patient's concerns. One of the patient's major hurdles was his current status of being homeless. This patient's only belongings and personal items were the clothes that he had worn into the department for his visit. The patient was concerned because he was having pain in his feet. Um, this provider was the one assigned to care for the patient and after examination she discovered that the real problem for the patient was that it, he did not have any socks on besides the ones that he was wearing. The patient's feet, uh, the, his feet were covered in blisters and a, a few of those even ap appeared to be infected. The patient indicated that his socks would become wet and he would try and let them dry out as much as possible, but this was not always a success. We didn't have any dry socks or footies at the urgent care location at that time. And when Chris found out, he jumped in to help. He did not hesitate, Quick, quickly went to the store to purchase the patient not only one pair of socks, but a full pack with his own money. When Chris returned and the patient was given the socks, he began to cry. The patient's emotions said it all. The patient told me that he has no family, nor does he have support in the area. But um, to the patient, this meant the world, and he identified with Chris's kind gesture and this sacrifice. 
She went on to say that she's proud to work with Chris and have the opportunity to experience the change that he is making in others' lives. So Chris, what a heartfelt story, and we thank you very much. And for that, here's a $100 read gift card. Yes. Thank you, Chris. Congratulations to you on the compassion and so forth you extended in the moment to that patient. Thank you very much for doing that. Wonderful story.